This is Hub City Spokes, where creators, catalysts, and leaders share their insight in Lubbock, Texas. This season, we're speaking with local businesses discussing their response to these changing times. Thanks for joining us. We have Stephanie Henderson, General Manager for Carpet Tech with us. Um, She's going to let us know a little bit about what Carpet Tech does and kind of how they've um, enhanced something they're already uh, using uh, for their customers. Um, We actually had Melinda on for the first season who talked kind of extensively about Carpet Tech and how it got started and whatnot. But for those that didn't catch that, do you mind kind of giving them an overview? Sure. Yeah, I'm excited to be here today. So thank you very much. Carpet Tech is a uh, full service company. We like to look at it more as we're a home service company because we do so many different things for individuals and their offices and things of that nature. But the the different parts of our business, we have our floor care services. So we like to say, if you can walk on it, we can clean or restore it for you. So your wood and natural stone and carpet and tile and things of that nature. So we also have our restoration business, which is fire and water damage restoration. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week, if there uh, any kind of disaster happens with that kind of thing, we'll come in, clean it all up for you. Um, get you back to pre-loss conditions. And then we have our remodeling company that comes in and can remodel everything and repair everything for you there. Um, We also do biohazard services, which is kind of something that we're going to touch on today, um, which includes the disinfecting services and biohazard cleanup and crime scene cleanup, things like that. Um, And then, you know, we have our pest control company and our pool cleaning company, so um, we we are just um, really excited to serve people and provide customer service. So we found out that you know, it doesn't really matter what service it is, as long as we're able to take care of people, we can be successful at it. Yeah, definitely. It seems like y'all, like you said, kind of a provide a service for any part or anything that might come up in life that y'all kind of take care of that for people. So I love the campaign that, um, I guess it's the flood and fire uh, hazard campaign with the kiddos that are yes. like, my, my dad's a hero. Superhero. And, yeah, yeah. That's so, that's yeah. such a, a cool way to look at it. And they do really have such an impact for people that have just been confronted with such devastation. Yes. I love that commercial because those kiddos are actually kids of the parents in our company. Yeah. So yeah. it's, it's really cool. It's a nice little sentimental piece for us too. Yeah, definitely. So you mentioned the, biohazard kind of component of it. Um, I don't want to speak for you, but I can't imagine you'd ever thought that that would be utilized like it is today with what's going on. Definitely not like it is today. You know, we've been doing biohazard cleaning for 25 years, but never with such a focus on one virus and with such a um, importance on the safety of our community and in the homes and especially businesses. You know, right now businesses are trying to reopen and it's so important that their consumers feel safe. So that's where we can come in and and do the disinfecting services for them um, so that they can, you know, show their consumers, verify to their consumers that, you know, we're doing everything that we possibly can can to keep this environment clean and disinfected. Yeah. So what, um, what does that process look like whenever you come in, um, let's say for a business? Sure. Um, so it's a little different for everybody based on the size and how much content you have and kind of what your goals are. So we'll first just come in and design a specific plan for the business. Um, but once we do that, you know, we'll first do what we call ATP testing. And um, that's really important because it it puts a science behind the cleaning and disinfecting. And what we're doing is we're going to test for the living organisms on the surfaces that we're going to disinfect. And so that's going to tell us, you know, how how high the level of bacteria, viruses, fungi, things of that uh, nature are. And then we can propose a plan based on that. You know, so we want to bring that living organism down to like a 30. It's an RLU. It's a relative light unit. Um, And so we know if it's at a 1500, we're going to have to do extra disinfecting, extra work to get it fully down to that 30. If we're at like a 200, then we know we're going to be able to come in, do a little bit quicker disinfecting and things of that nature. So once we figure out what that looks like, then we'll come in and we'll spray and fog everything eight feet up the floor and down and everything in between. So the chemicals that we use are EPA approved um, and they are not harmful to any kind of content that you could have. So we can use this uh, fogging method to do a light mist over the things that we touch a lot, like our computers and our keyboards and phones and things of that nature, so that we still protect the contents, but they're getting disinfected as well. So we'll go through and do all of that. And the most important thing with the chemicals is the kill time. So we need to give it ample time to actually kill what's on the surfaces so we can come back and do a verifying ATP test to say, okay, we've gotten the levels down low enough for this to be a safe environment. 
Gotcha. That's interesting. I, I guess it, I mean, it makes a lot of sense that you're analyzing the certain surface and determining, like you said, the, the bacteria amount or degree to which. So you're not just treating everything as if it's the same. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. So no, there's a, a lot of science behind cleaning and disinfecting. People usually don't look at it that way because it's not something that you have to be certified to do, but it's important when you're trying to choose somebody to know that that you know what exactly did they do? What did they spray down? What what are they disinfecting with? So we decided to add that in as part of our service so that we could make people feel more comfortable and, and know that something has actually been disinfected and the living organisms have been actually killed rather than that just being up in the air. Gotcha. Yeah. it's. I'm sure they appreciate being able to know that it's what you say is clean is actually clean. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. So I'm curious, whenever, you know, all this happened with COVID, what what was it like kind of being in those leadership meetings? Um, you know, when Carpet Tech, you know, obviously saw this is something that's happening to our community. This is something we need to, you know, address. What was that like? What, what was said? Yeah, so it was um, it was different than anything we've ever, you know, had to do. We are an emergency service company, so we deal with crisis a lot or urgency, and we have to do things now, and we have to change this now or change our trajectory here. Um, but this was different because we were we were trying to stay ahead of what was coming, but we've never experienced anything like this before. So we were just you know, mulling through, okay, judgment calls here. What do we need to do to protect our businesses, our, our business, our employees, um, things of that nature. So there was a lot of, you know, well, what if this happens? How are we protected? If this happens, how are our employees protected? Are we, you know, covering all the concerns of our employees? That was one of the biggest things for us initially, because we knew that we would be an essential business. We knew that we would still operate no matter what, happened. So we wanted our employees to feel safe and not have concerns of, you know, um, with the virus or is the environment going to be safe? Are we going to have to be in the building? How are we going to protect ourselves and other businesses and homes? Um, so that was a huge topic for us. Uh, Might have been a little different than most businesses, but we we made the decision just to go all the way with it. Um, whether it came full on at us or not, we wanted to protect um, the people that do the things for us day in and day out. So that was a huge topic. And then just, you know, how do we we cover our business and make sure that we can maintain this? And how do we help other businesses? So, you know, it was important to us to, you know, be able to provide our disinfecting services, but also think outside the box and how can we help and protect local business in general mm -hmm. around us? How, we, how can we support them? You know, those were the kind of questions we were asking of each other just to create and develop some kind of plan so that we felt like we were being, we were supporting instead of just sitting back on our heels. That was the last thing we wanted to do. We wanted to move forward regardless. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Carpet Tech is such a huge proponent for the community, Y'all are so involved in so many different things. So I can definitely understand how that would be kind of at the forefront of your yes, mind. Absolutely. <laughs> So I'm just curious, as a Lubbock business, what are some things that you feel like we are learning maybe as a business community or even, you know, just as a city from what we're going through? What are some things that... I think one of the more important lessons is how um, important local business is to us. You know, before this, it probably wasn't on everybody's forefront how... Um, how much the local businesses need the people in Lubbock to use them and the surrounding communities. And I think now that this has happened, our local businesses that are able to fight through it and ha had a great foundation will benefit more in the long run because it's very apparent right now. It's very apparent that we need each other to support each other. You know, so I think that was probably the biggest lesson that I've seen so far. I do feel like in West Texas, we're a little bit more protected, you know, um, than people on the East Coast or up north, just from everything that's going on. So um, I feel like we're very blessed to be here. I, I'm happy to be in Lubbock, Texas, as opposed to other places in the country. So I think just a new enlightening of, you know, how great the city is and how great our businesses are that are actually here. Yeah, definitely. Someone was actually saying earlier that 
Um, we have a lot of space out here, which is actually, yes. <laughs> you know, really appreciated right mm-hmm. now. We we kind of, uh, a colleague of mine actually uh, was talking about how we've, we've already been social distancing, yes. <laughs> you know, we have like our own space, you yes. have your own space. So there's lots of room to grow yes, for sure. Absolutely. So, well, speaking of, of growth, where do you see Carpet Tech in the next five years? I guess that may be an odd question yeah. to ask because, you know, with everything that's going on, if we've, we've learned anything, things can change fast. Well, so. um it's a good thing because that's pretty much my job is to make sure we're protected and know what we're doing for the next five years. So what we see in our industry is that this is going to create a boom for our industry and for carpet tech because the disinfecting and cleaning um, is going to be such an, a heightened awareness mm-hmm. that um, we're really prepping right now for growth in the next five years because of that fact. Um, because, you know, in the past, we didn't think a lot about, you know, what are we touching and are we touching our face? Are we, you know, who? so now it's going to be more about, am, am I able to keep my business clean? You know, I think consumers are going to be making choices on who they use and where they go based a lot on how they feel about how clean the place is. Yeah. So that's going to change uh, the dynamic for us as a company and in the cleaning industry in general. So right now we're really getting ready for making sure, you know, we have the inventory we need. We have the people we need. We have the training that we need so that we can facilitate and help um, in those areas moving forward. So well, we appreciate everything you do for the sure. community and, and like I said, the services that you offer. So uh, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, today. thank you. It's been great. We'll catch you next time. Hub City Spokes is produced by the Lubbock Economic Development Alliance in partnership with Hamel Bros Studios. Special thanks to the Doubletree by Hilton for hosting us here in downtown Lubbock. For more episodes and to subscribe, go to lubbockeda.org slash podcast.